This production has been brought to you by the Free Lunch Podcast. Unauthorized use and or duplication of this material without express and written permission from the Free Lunch Podcast is strictly prohibited. This show has been brought to you by the Thomas Allen Collection. The Thomas Allen Collection is a men's accessory line designed to attract and capture a variety of tastes with a unique appeal. Thomas Allen strives to produce an extraordinary design to turn a new leaf on fashion for men and a desired occasion. Ladies, get your men a Thomas Allen Collection tie. They'll love it. Gentlemen, get you a Thomas Allen Collection tie. Uh, BG, don't you own a uh, Thomas Allen Collection tie? Yes, sir. And they way fly than anything that's already out there. I got a couple of them, so I recommend going out there and getting some of that flay. Yep, Thomas Allen Collection. Um, you can reach him at 678-960-9171, 678-960-9171, Thomas Allen, when time or not really counts. Now on to the show. Ladies and gentlemen, a classic. A classic. This love, it's been a long, long time coming, but I know a change gon' come. Yeah, I chose the path, the path chose me. It's a law plan, divine decree. Natural high, window sheet. Up a parallel view, let the ghetto see. BK, and OLA, OMF, GLD. Welcome to the Free Lunch Podcast, home of the New South Movement. This is your boy, Tight Tight, one half of the Free Lunch Podcast duo. Be Jeezy. Yeah, yeah. Are you with me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kevin Church ain't going nowhere. What's happening? Free Lunch Podcast, BG, the 2 7 Kid. What's happening then? Man, I, I was listening to some Kurt Franklin earlier today. Mm-hmm. And so I figured I'd bring you on with a little, with a little Kurt Franklin. Well, I appreciate that. That's appropriate. Is it? Kind of. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> you coming At down with it... a cold, man? Well, you need some, you man, need some OJ? Dude. Dude, I'm 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 recovering from the cold. You know, we talked about that flight that I had uh, coming back from D.C. This was the other part of it. I got sick the next day. Oh, really? I yeah, it happened. Oh, okay. But I'm 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 recovering though. I'm almost back. Hey, man, you famous? What's up? I'm famous. You worldwide. You you internationally known for what? Man, you was all up on NBC. On Premier, the fight, talking about the yeah. fight, PBC, Premier Boxing Championship. It was crazy, boy, all the way live, Birmingham, Alabama. That was strategically placed. It was. They, they call it product placement. <laughs> <laughs> with, the, with the free love podcast, hey, they call it product placement. Hey, you was all up on you was all up on the TV, like, like, like I was like you say, it was almost like you was a character in the in in the, in the uh, in the drama. I was part of it, man. Uh, yeah. Talk about that, it, man. Too bad it wasn't HBO, but the crazy thing about it, though, man, is that, like, when I was getting them tickets, there was actually some tickets that were available, like, on further down, on that same road, on further down. And I didn't get them right then. You know, after so much time, it expires, and then those tickets kind of go back into into sale or whatnot. Mm-hmm. And so I went back in, and the tickets that I was originally looking at were gone. Mm-hmm. And so the tickets that I ended up with were like the Plan B tickets. And actually, the Plan B tickets end up being better than the first option because I was right there by the, the aisle that the fighters came down. And as you see, it was right there in the line of view for the – uh, for the cameras, so it was it was a it was a great night, man. Birmingham really did show up for that event. I was actually shocked, but the people came out, and it was it was almost like Vegas in that thing. Yeah, because I was looking at it, and and that's something that I've always wanted to do was was basically sit ringside at a major heavyweight fight, and unfortunately, I I haven't had the opportunity to sit ringside at. And one as high profile as as the Dante Wilder fight, but I have sat ringside. But it was a less, again, it was less a competition. But t- talk about talk about how it was actually hearing the hearing the punches and Bruh. and is I mean, <laughs> bro, <laughs> bro, watching it on TV don't do it no justice. Like like I was telling you, we we underestimate that when we watch it from home. You just see the guys taking these punches and you. You want your guy to hit harder, and then if he's taking punches, you want him to block. 
I don't understand how in the world somebody would decide to be a professional boxer. Because after after getting hit a couple of times like that, I'm 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 I'm, I'm done. I'm out of here. I'm talking about <laughs> on any level. I don't care if it's lightweight, middleweight, and definitely heavyweight. That's some real punishment being dished out. And I'm talking about pure thuds. <laughs> Leather to skin contact. And these dudes are taking it. Like the guy that the young Tay was fighting last night from France, mm-hmm. he kept coming. He had a busted up face and he kept coming. I'm like, this is insane. Mm-hmm. So to to be there and 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 to be right there and really see what goes on, man, it's like car collisions for twelve or however many rounds. It's ridiculous. Man, well, just do one thing for me. What's up, to man? All, to all those people that like to sit ringside, if you know you're going to have to use the bathroom, can you please get an aisle seat? <laughs> Why? We- you saw them dudes <laughs> kept getting up? Yes. <laughs> that, was Matt, that was Matthew and his dad. Would y'all please go sit they- your butt down? They got their lake. Then they went to the, to the, to the concession stand, got two cups of beer. Brought that bag, sat down, had to go to the bathroom to get that off, and came back with two more cups of beer. It was crazy. It was crazy. So, so if you that was if Matthew you, and his dad. So Matthew and his dad. If you decide to attend the Dante Wilder fight for the next go around, please get your two beers before you sit down and and go into the bathroom and use the restroom because we as fans do not want to see you continually get up and <laughs> walk between. And disturb even the folks that are sitting on your wild. <laughs> <laughs> it was a crazy night, but it was it was really fun, man. And and I hope that uh, Deontay keep winning because I got a feeling he's gonna continue to bring fights to this area. And it's a different type of athletic event for the state, mm-hmm. but the people were like were really excited about it. So hopefully he'll have another few fights here uh, at home. Oh, he plans to, and 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 when he does, I I will be in attendance. Um, because I do feel like that's something that I want to do and, and be able to sit ringside. So t- shout out to Dante Wilder and shout out to the free lunch podcast on, uh, Diddy ringside sitting BG, the Diddy of the free lunch podcast. Take that. I re- I, when I realized the camera was on, I was trying to pose on y'all, but I couldn't get it right. Take that. Take that. Take that. I need, I need more practice. <laughs> hey man, let's get into the show. We like, we like to bring on entertaining guests that are walking in their passion, but also have the opportunity to share that with the Free Lunch Podcast fam. And and even this particular guest, he may have covered, let me say that again, he may have covered a, a large event similar to this. And that's why I look forward to to the person that I'm about to introduce who's actually been in the, the, the broadcast television industry for over 12 years. Um, I look forward to him kind of telling his story because I've known him for for years, man. We actually went to middle school together, ended up going in separate directions um, for high school. Uh, but I've I've all when, when I saw him, you know, covering covering different events and sporting events, uh, I kind of reached back out to him like, man, what are you doing? You know, because it was just interesting to me. And then even on one day, and we'll talk about this on the podcast, BG, have you ever dreamed of being on the cover of of sport of ESPN.com? Oh, no doubt. For sure. Some? Well, he was on the cover of ESPN.com. Oh, wow. I mean, on the cover. And, and when I saw it, I actually, I actually had emailed it to him, trying to let him know, and I think other people have, had informed him as well. But, but I do want to bring on... Um, a, a friend of the, uh, of, the, of the Free Lunch Podcast, a friend of mine, uh, and his name is, no, with no further ado, i like to bring on Michael Tart. Mike Tart, how you doing there, sir? I'm good, man. How y'all boys doing, man? Doing, doing very well, doing very well. Thank you for, 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 for uh, your willingness to participate, especially after a long night like, <laughs> like, like last night. Uh, before we jump into it, can you – I got two questions for you. Have you ever covered an event like 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 the Dante Wilder fight? I'm gonna tell you this, man. I actually shot an interview with him last week. Man, it's, it's, that, that guy is cool, man. He he's destined for greatness, man. I wish I could have seen the fight, but I had to cover the Auburn game 
Uh, my reporter oh, was giving me like tweets about oh, he, he's killing this dude, man. But I, I wish I could have seen that fight. But I'm, I would be straight up, which I, I covered so much stuff. The the one event that sticks out to me that I witnessed firsthand. I bet I was, know what it is. Let, let you me already guess. know. Let it, me it, guess. It's the kick six, <laughs> yep, man. I knew it. I knew I, it. <laughs> it, it n- nothing, nothing can top that, man. Like. Well, like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't even talk about it yet. Let's take a step back. Let's leave them, let's leave them hanging right now. Let's leave it on the <laughs> tease because, because we haven't even really properly introduced what it is that you do. Um, you kind of mentioned you've met and you've kind of, you've, you've covered Dante Wilder because we were using him as, as our initial example to get into the show. But let's take a step back and let's talk about what it is that you actually do. So you've been doing this passion for 12 years. What What is this passion? I'm a photographer, but for some people, I just say a cameraman. Just put it like that, make it simple for people. I go out, I cover news. At one point, I was just strictly sports when I moved to Birmingham. I did strictly sports for two years. Man, I mean, that, that was the best two years of my life. Like just doing sports, seeing, just interviewing, seeing people, going to different venues, I mean, you can't beat it, man. How did you get into being a cameraman? I I went to school, actually, to be a sports reporter, man, of all things. I went to school to be a sports reporter. I ended up writing for the school newspaper. I went to Auburn University in Montgomery, AUM. Now it's just Auburn, Montgomery, whatever they call it. And uh, I was just writing for the school newspaper, and I began doing an intern at a television station at a CBS station, WAKA. And uh, I did a sports intern. Well, I was a sports producer, sports editor, and I learned how to shoot sports. And, um, you know, once that ended, I graduated and um, sat out for three months. And they had an opening for a photographer, man. And I, I had no experience as a photographer at all, man. I shot like two things here and there. But they hired me, man. They took a chance on me. They hired me, and I never looked back after that. You so so you went to to college. Yeah, um, you were studying sports journalism. It, it, so you it was just to journalism be, you as to, a whole, okay, pretty much. Like writing for newspaper, radio, TV, magazine, just all, all media all together. So you wanted to be in front of the camera. I did. I really did. But that that so changed, man. Once I got into the intern and I saw how things really were at the TV station. No, you said since middle school, when did you find that love for journalism? It, that That's a funny question, man. This this came about in high school. I was sitting in a Spanish class. Murphy, Murphy, in, Murphy High School. Murphy High School. Man. <laughs> Shout out to the Panthers at Murphy High School. <laughs> What, BG, BG, 100. Mike Robinson went to uh, Murphy High School was the, oh, was the quarterback I over there. I, I know that. <laughs> that 100 South Carlin Street. Every student from Murphy High School knows that address, man. That That's <laughs> that's it. You go to Murphy High School, you know that address. But no, man, I'm, uh, I'm sitting in a Spanish class just not paying attention. And it was a shelf next to me full of encyclopedias. And I just picked it up. And I picked up B, and it was broadcast journalism. And I just started reading it, and it intrigued me. And I was in, I was in the 10th grade. And ever since the 10th grade of high school, I wanted to be in broadcast journalism. Did you strategically go to AUM because of that journalism school, or is that just where you ended up going? That's, just, that's where I just ended up going, man. They didn't have, like, a TV program like most schools. Uh, most journalism schools you may know might be, like, University of Missouri, uh, Troy, but I pick AUM because that was just the right fit for me. Where was the internship at? In what city? It was in Montgomery. It was it was uh, right down the street from the school. Um, I actually did two of them. I did it at uh, WSFA. That's the NBC affiliate up there. And to be honest, I I kind of didn't grasp what I was doing. I was just there, and I really didn't have you know people that are really telling me. It was kind of like fend for yourself. So when I finished that intern, I was like, I need to do another one where I can really, you know, find out what I'm really doing. So I went over to WAKA and I pretty much just sold myself like, hey, I'm into, you know, broadcast television. I, w- I would love to do sports. And I mean, day one, when I walked in, they put me to work. And that, and that was just the best experience to have. They It was just hands on. This wasn't for a grade. It was just my free time. 
learning what I really wanted to do. With the internship, was that something that was kind of put in place by your school's program, or was it something that you independently had to go and seek out uh, to obtain? The first one I had to do, that was for a school grade, but the second one I did independently. Like, I, I, I felt myself like, you know, I, I need to learn more. I'm, I'm, I don't fully grasp what I'm doing. I, I got to go out and find, you know, more information on television. So the second one was all on my own. And that'd be good for like, our, you know, people, parents and people that have like relatives that are thinking about going down this journalism path and stuff like that is like how how feasible is it to to get these internships? Is it an easy process, a difficult process? So that's good to know that you can step out on your own and, and go and talk to these these news outlets and try to land a spot and get some of that experience. But but that brings uh-huh. up a good interesting, interesting point, BG, because I've had this debate with a mutual friend of ours that basically was making the claim that he felt like Auburn didn't do his due diligence in preparing him for for different careers that were available because the lack of of, of internship or, or co-op programs, which is another conversation, but it's an yeah. interesting topic because in in Michael's case, he actually went out and he was proactive on the on the um, on that second occasion to to find himself an internship. So so Mike, you you graduate, but then you say for three months you didn't have any work. No, man. I sat on my parents' couch, man. I was just sitting there <laughs> sending out resumes. I'm doing everything, man. And, and, and you know, after the three months, I I just got tired. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go to a job fair. I, I was back in Mobile. And I was like, I'm going to go to this job fair in Birmingham and see what I can find. I went to the job fair, and, of course, they told you, Oh, you got to go to the website and apply. And I said, okay, cool. So after, you know, the job fair in Birmingham, I went back to Montgomery to the old station that I interned, the second the second intern. And they had the photographer opening, and I told him, like, look, I'm going to be honest with you. I just told him, hey, I need benefits. I need health benefits. I need a job, man. I, I got to take care of myself. And it was like, is this really what you want to do? I said, yeah, this is what I want to do. It's like, it might be hard for you, you know, starting off with no experience, but is this really what you want to do? I said, yeah. And they hired me, man. I was there. I probably worked free for like three days. That was what, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I left to go back home to Mobile Thursday. They called me Friday and made the job offer. Oh, wow. So you were actually working for free? Yeah, man. I worked for free. I was riding with reporters riding with photographers. And I'm, I'm going to tell you this, man. The thing about that station was they wasn't real connected until, like, the big corporations. So they didn't have all the stipulations and rules of this person can't ride in the car because he's not a station employee, whereas they were just an independently owned station. So they let me do pretty much, you know, they, they allowed me to do some things that a corporation – corporation owned station wouldn't let me do and Mm -hmm. believe me i'm thankful for that and that three month period when you were at your parents house what were they saying to you oh man you know they they was just pushing me man they was pushing me you know to you know keep applying and i I was applying and and things weren't working out and you know they they just kept pushing and i just i just said man i i gotta get out of here i I feel bad just sitting here man i I feel bad like i just graduated I, i need to be working that was just my thing. I felt like I needed to be working. What 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 were you doing on the internship? Um, I know at the time you weren't you were not being a a, uh, a photographer, but what did you said they had you working for day one? Were you writing um, for anchors? Were you actually doing some reporting? Uh, I did the writing. I did editing. Um, and it it was to one point where they were going to allow me to drive a station vehicle to go shoot an Alabama State basketball game. And I was like, whoa, I don't know if I could do that one. But, you know, I, I shot a little bit, but it was mainly like the writing. That's where I learned how to write and, and edit video. Were you were you writing or were you being paid during this internship? Oh, no, not at all. Not at all. It was all on my free time, man. This is interesting, yeah. man. This is grassroots conversation right here, BG. And those news outlets he talk about are like fundamental news um, 
outlets here in this particular area. Like we we rely heavily on those news stations to to cover different stories and stuff like that. So, you know, I I, I kind of feel close to this story and knowing that that Mike probably had a hand in some of the work that I was visualizing and seeing and reading and all that <laughs> yeah, type of stuff. That's that's, that's real good. To, to be honest, it's, it's so universal, man. Like the, the stuff we're doing here in what Birmingham, Mobile, Montgomery, it's the same stuff they're doing at CNN. Like it's, it's no difference, man. It's just that do you want to go there? Do you want to deal with that? You know, that's that's the thing. It's all universal. Mm-hmm. So they hire you after those three days. Um, you're actually a full time photographer at this point. Um, what happens next? I go to work. I went to work on, like I said, 12 years ago yesterday. I went to work. That was a Friday night. So you had high school football, which I, I love shooting sports. They sent, they sent me to like a Hyundai press conference because they were building the Hyundai plant right outside Montgomery at the time. I remember. They sent, mm-hmm. they sent me to a press conference. I shot that, sent it back, edited it. And then I went to shoot two high school football games and had to edit that. So, I, so that was so, my first day at work. <laughs> what are you going with the reporter or are you just going by yourself as the photographer? At that point I was I was by myself. Mm-hmm. And you are yeah, you it's, driving it's, a company van or are you driving your own vehicle? It's it's the uh, company truck, man. Okay, okay, okay. It, you, you they you, they do the background on your driver's license and your driving record. So that that has to be tight, man. Like if you got a DUI, don't don't think about being a photographer. You you can just hang it up, man. BG, you remember your first day? Uh, nope. I surely do not. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you how exciting that was. No, nah, I have no clue on my first day. Were you, did you feel like you were prepared for that? You know, because you got a lot of responsibility, and I'm sure they were confident giving it to you because you had intern and all that type of stuff. But was there any anxiety taking on these, um, taking on these, these jobs? Man, I, to be honest, I was just happy to be employed and driving a truck around so people can see me in it, man, <laughs> for real. Because, man, when you work in, like, a small yep. city like that, man, people kind of respect the fact that you know, you're driving a truck around and stuff, man. And I was kind of glad to be just driving that truck and wearing a shirt. Like, <laughs> man, and, just, we, and we know about it. Well, you would, when you're depressed, you got a lot of clout with you. <laughs> <laughs> we experienced that firsthand. Folks respect the respect the press. So you walking in there, you walking you walking into the high school football game. Everybody looking at you because they they see the newsman there. Yeah, they see the camera. They see the shirt, man. <laughs> it's like either put me on TV or who are you and do you know you know who you work with and this you know that that type deal, man. So, I ain't gonna lie because when we played on Friday night, you be looking for the cameraman. If the cameraman show up, you know your. <laughs> You know your game is official. Friday Night Fever and all of them show up. You know your game is official when they come. So I, I know what he's talking about. Yeah, and all he got to do is just point the camera at the at the fans and they go crazy. He might not even have it on. Hey, it, it's True. been plenty of times I wasn't rolling on people, man. Plenty of times. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk. Let's get let's get into it though. I want to talk about the actual art of photography and and really get into to some of your more entertaining stories. Talk about your journey, right? So you worked in Montgomery. Um, at one point you was working in Mobile, and now you're in Birmingham. Is that correct? That's correct, man. I went to, I went to Mobile for one because I needed more money. <laughs> I ain't even going <laughs> to lie to you, man. I wasn't making no money in Montgomery. Uh-huh. And uh, when I moved back to Mobile, man, I was able to support myself. I wasn't getting help or nothing like that from my folks. So I was able to do it all on my own. Mm-hmm. And uh. So did and you, when apply, I moved, did when you I moved, apply for a job in Mobile, or yeah, were you just kind of transferred? I applied for a job, man. Okay. I, I worked in Montgomery for eight months. Gotcha, gotcha. Just eight months. And um, I applied for the job in Mobile, and I got it. And, you know, my folks, they, you know, they were happy to have me there, and I was happy to be there so they can actually see my work and, you know, see what I'm doing. Right, right. And when I moved there, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stay here two years and, you know, move to another market because that, that's the thing when you work in tv man you try to get to the top markets you bounce around from city to city unless you really love a place man and i got the mobile i knew the area i knew the streets i knew some of the people i stayed there for eight years it's just you know fun man just to be at home doing what you love 
Mm-hmm. And then, you know, when I was in Mobile, I got the opportunity to cover just sports only in mm-hmm. Birmingham. And I was like, man, I'm not passing that up. I'm, I'm taking that. Like, I'm taking it. Oh, so you only cover sports in Birmingham? That that was for uh, two years, but they moved me back into news now. Oh, but wow. I still, you know, cover sports here and now now. But mm-hmm. at one point, I was just covering sports because we had to do a 30-minute sports show Monday through Friday. Mm-hmm. Which which was cool, man. It, that that gave me a lot of experience, like you know, dealing with shows and producing shows. But mm-hmm. yeah, that's that's the journey, man. That's that's pretty much it. So we we laid the foundation. Let's get into what the people really want to hear. Can you talk about some of the most interesting people that you have actually that that you've met? Oh, man, it's it's like a list. Uh, like just one, name one, them. Just one, name one, them. Just name them. One of my first, you know, the first one was in Montgomery was Jesse Jackson. I got to interview him by myself. <laughs> Interesting. I, was, I really don't get starstruck, but I was by myself. I was a little starstruck <laughs> then. Like, man, I'm hey, Mike. Jesse Jackson. <laughs> hey, Mike, it happens. Ask tight about it. <laughs> yeah, he, just... he, got, he got overwhelmed by the aura of Jesse Jackson, too. Well, hey, I've man. Had, I've had the opportunity. I, to I like... listened to some of that podcast, man. <laughs> <laughs> that one was funny, man. That was funny. The you... mystique got him. You... <laughs> nah. Which one did you listen to? Free lunch podcast or the D One Sports Talk podcast? Oh, the, the free lunch. The free okay, lunch. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we got. I told that story. I told the story also on the D One Sports Talk. And I, I met the honor. I met the honorable Jesse Jackson. Um, this was that. That would have been my second time meeting him. But on this second occasion, I just shook my head, man. I was just like. <laughs> I can't tell the man no, and I everybody and all the text messages and the conversations I'm having, everybody telling me I got Debo. Now, <laughs> nah, man, nah. <laughs> and now BG, now, now BG Cole say he would have told me, he would have told me Jesse and Jesse Boyd to go to the back of the line. If he I heard, what Cole, <laughs> I heard what Cole said. Cole lied. Cole would did the same thing. <laughs> but anyway, how was that experience though, Mike? When you say you was a little starstruck. Yeah, man, because at the time, I'm 22 years old, man. And I'm right. like, man, this, this is Jesse Jackson. I only seen him on TV. And I'm interviewing him. Like, oh, man, that's, that's pretty cool. You know, after I did, I'm like, man, that, that's cool. But, you know, some some of the other people, Jay Leno. Um, Jay, where did you meet Jay Leno at? I, we shot an interview with him. He was at the Beau Rivage doing one of his shows. And they they gave the the lo- they gave the NBC affiliate which I worked for at the time WPMI and Mobile they gave the NBC affiliate a chance to interview him and hang out with him before his show. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So you interviewed Jay. Oh, that's interesting. That's good. Yeah, Jay Leno. Uh, I I can't think off the bat because I, I just think more of sports people because oh, I deal fine. more with sports yeah, man. Yeah, that's fine. Dante Wilder. Like, what about during Katrina? What about during Katrina? I mean, not Katrina, but um. Oil spill. You say you met. Did you meet like the president or anyone during that time? Man, I mean, you keep the video and stuff. You you don't really meet them, man. I, I, to be honest with you, I, I do not like covering presidents, man. I, I hate the presidential visits because the president. <laughs> let's say I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. It's, this is far as like as far as working, man. I, I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I hate I hate those presid- working a presidential visit. Let's put it exactly. like that. Exactly. As far as it's the clear, media. it's clear, it's clear. You clear. <laughs> as far as the media, um, let's say they have an event at four o'clock p.m. Man, you have to be there like ten a.m. Set up, ready to go. Mm-hmm. They do a sweep, then they let you back in the area, and then they kick you out of the area. So they do another sweep, and you're just waiting. You're waiting. You're waiting. Four o'clock come, president come, do like a two minute speech, he's gone. Right. <laughs> man, this ain't even worth it, man. I <laughs> I just never been a fan of it, man. It's it, it's the biggest waste of time to me as far as the media. When you see it on television, it looks great. It looks good, but mm-hmm. I know what them photographers and reporters have gone through by just sitting there and waiting all day <laughs> for like a five minute speech. But who are some of the political people that you've kind of they don't even have to be the president, but any high profile political figures that you had to cover? Uh, just anybody like in Alabama State Senate House. Gotcha. Um, you know, just different stuff like that, man. Entertainers, and, you know, entertainers. Entertainers, Jay Leno. Um, 
actually, you know, you brought up Katrina. I don't know if you remember the Heal the Hood concert they had in Atlanta. We uh we we went over there and we interviewed Ti. We interviewed Young Jeezy, man, <laughs> uh, Nelly. Like it, it, for real, man. That 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 was a cool experience to just be there. You know, they were raising money, you know, for Katrina, but to be around them and see, like, man, these just regular people, man. And eight eight ball and MJG. Like you listen to these guys' lyrics and you'd be like, Man, these dudes are wild, but man, these dudes were the most reserved and quiet dudes I ever seen. Yeah, laid back. <laughs> Just laid back, man. Just reserved, man. I, I I really can respect that. Have you been able to develop any relationship with them folks at all? Just out of curiosity or Nah, man, because really. for just one, I, I just speak and keep it moving, man. Right. I I I don't want to be that media guy. I don't want to <laughs> be that like. Right. Oh, I, I I know Shaq or I know LeBron. It's like, nah. You know, I I can't lie. I go take a picture with him and, and be done. But I don't I don't want to be that guy. So so are there guys that are in media that that take that approach though, the way they want to be, had the connections and all that type of stuff. Oh, most definitely, man. Most definitely. You, you gotta have that source, got... BG. You gotta have a source. <laughs> I guess you're right. Yeah, you, you, you got to have your sources, and sometimes it works out for people, man. You know, you have that source, and sometimes it doesn't. But I, I'm just not that person because I feel like when you go up to entertainers, sometimes they, they kind of don't want to be bothered, and they're just doing it just to do it. Like, uh, for instance, covered the – this one was the BCS championship game. It was Alabama, LSU, and New Orleans. And I got to meet Spike Lee. I took a picture with Spike Lee because I really respect Spike Lee. And then I watch other people go to him like, oh, I watch all your movies and this and that. It's like, come on, man. Like that. I don't think he really cares about that stuff, man. So let's get into some of the experiences that you that you've had as a photographer. So one one that comes to mind is um, when you were covering the the, the political figure um, in Mobile that was high profile and uh, I don't know if he was found guilty or not but it was just a real high profile story and I know you covered that from a news perspective daily so can you kind of talk about that particular story and other stories that that and what you've seen and experienced for that them type of stories Steve no doubt and what was the what's the background in that story he was a county commissioner and and the thing was about him he was media friendly so if you ever needed anything about the county you know mobile county man you you call him he, he's gonna do the interview because can't lie to do like being on tv and the thing about that that can help your career and at the same time it can damage your career like you, if, if people see a lot of you it's like okay he's a good guy but when you do something wrong it's like whoa okay that's him he's he's a sleaze ball or whatever Mm-hmm. But it's it's some some parts of that case I don't remember. You know, it was like he was he was married, but he had a girlfriend too, <laughs> and he you know he was pretty much arrested for allegedly killing his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And this guy, man, I I knew him outside of work too. Like I I knew him. <laughs> like so I can go to him and say hey he was like hey Michael how you doing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when that stuff was going on, man, it's just all our coverage of him every day, like staking him out, staking out every lead, you know, every day, just draining, draining, trying to get, you know, information. And some, in some cases, you're trying to get information before the other stations get it, man. So, I mean, that. That is like the grind of it, man. Just keeping tabs on him and also keeping tabs on what the other stations are doing so you can beat them. But with him, man, you know, it, just interviewing people in the streets, man, from from my perspective, a lot of people would say he didn't do it. What 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 does that entail? Like the stake now? Like how do you guys know where he's at or how do y'all get this what where does the information come from? I'm going to tell the you state? this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to digress a little bit. Okay. But okay. The, the, way, the way media works now, man, if somebody gets arrested or let's say somebody dies or something like that, the first thing 
producers and people inside the station are going to do is go to your Facebook page. They're going to go to your Instagram. They're going to go to your Twitter. They're going to see, you know, pretty much spy on you on what you're doing. <laughs> like, uh, uh, I'm dead serious, man. I try to tell people, like, hey, watch what you post on Facebook. Watch, you know, watch some of the things you post because you never know that could be used against you. But with, with, with him, it was just going to his house. And I, I, I hate, I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of going to knock on somebody's door, have the camera rolling. You, you do that? You, you have to do that? I mean, I did that so many times, <laughs> man, and I was nervous every oh, time. Oh, hell no. <laughs> I bet. Because you don't every know. Time. You you just don't know what's behind the house or what's coming through the window. Like, I, every time I did that with a reporter, because we, we had some reporters that did that, and they love to do that. And I was like, look, man, safety's first. <laughs> <laughs> like safety safe first. I my, love my, hear that. I love hear that conversation on the way over there in, in the truck. Man, I, I wouldn't say nothing. I, I, I was so mad that I couldn't talk. That I, I would talk to you until after it was done. I would say nothing. But I would keep both eyes open. Yeah, one eye's in the camera, but the other eye open, looking like, okay, let me make sure nothing happens. And once somebody tells me. Get off my property. <laughs> done. I'm done, man. I, reporters will sit there and try to bargain with them. I'm like, hey, hey, they said get off their property. And, and, and by law, once they say that, man, you got to move. Be in this camera, we go. <laughs> nah, I, 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 keep, I keep the camera rolling, but I'm walking away. <laughs> I'm walking away. I'm not fit to deal with that one. No, I, I got to come back and, and do another story tomorrow. So that that's just the way I live on that one. Mike, had there ever been a time, Mike, when somebody got on the camera, y'all might have interviewed somebody on the camera, and you like, what is this person? Why are we interviewing this person? All the time. <laughs> <laughs> you, know the time. All, you know how they all always the pull somebody off the street that don't really know what happened, but they know what happened, and they get on and blow it on the on the camera. I'm, I'm laughing or I'm formulating my opinion about this person. Like, this person ain't going to make this story tonight. Or or this person is the lead story tonight and just don't know it. <laughs> let me and, ask you, Let me ask. For real. And, and this is the other thing, too, man. People always ask the question, and you, and you probably were going to ask me this question, like, why do you always interview people with no teeth or, or they drunk or whatever? And, and to be honest with you, we don't seek these people out. We go and we we, 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 we we ask intelligent people and say, hey, do you want to be on camera from this story? And they tell us no. And we're working on a deadline. So to be honest, we're going to find the first person we see or the person that's willing to talk to us. And if that person don't have teeth or whatever, man, that person's going on television because we got to make that deadline. Sweet Brown. So, so, so you... <laughs> Like who decides that y'all are going to like, in this case, Steve is Steve's house to, Steve. yeah, to to kind of stalk him at his house. Like who makes these decisions? Is that the producer, uh, it, or is that it, just during y'all meeting or what? Isn't a meeting, and that, that that comes from the news director, who, who who's pretty much over the news room. Okay. So it's like, hey, you you're gonna work this angle. You you wait at his house or whoever house or. This person, you go wait at county commission for his meeting to be over with. And and we and I've done that, too. We waited for a meeting to be over with. And all other stations were there, and we just kind of ambushed them, you know, after the <laughs> meeting. Like, seriously, man, you, you, you're a political figure, man. We can do that type stuff to you, man. But, like, the regular person, I, I, I wouldn't want to ambush your, you know, your regular Joe on some story, but right. a political figure, you can run up to them while they're in their car. Yeah. It's it's fair game to me. Okay, I got another question. Did you cover the leprechaun in Mobile? Man, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was wondering about that. <laughs> Man, that that was my station. Okay, but uh, you were you were you I, working I, there I, at I the had, time? I had no parts of that story. Okay. No parts of it. Okay. 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 And you, you know what's funny about the leprechaun story is that the the one of the other stations did that story first. Oh, it really? was just the way we presented that story that made it blow up, man. Okay. 
It it was the people that was interviewed. <laughs> oh man, that 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 story right there, man, is is classic. That's just classic. Oh yeah, who wants to see the body go? Body go? <laughs> <laughs> man, you know what? You know that that guy actually came up to the station, really, and was trying to get paid, man. Really? Yeah, he was trying to get paid because that story went, you know, it got posted on YouTube. It was on some other shows like True TV and uh, some other stations, man. And I guess he's he's been seeing it on cable and that guy was trying to get paid. And it's like, oh, sorry, man, we, we, we honestly can't do nothing for you because once we record you, you belong to us. So mm. Mm. sorry, no, no. Yeah, that's that's just you get your fame, but you don't get paid for it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. What what uh what's a typical day? Uh, what's a typical day for for you, Mike? Um, because because you kind of talk about the meet or you or we kind of mentioned the meetings that you'll have, and then the news director will give you a direction that that you need to go in. What's a typical day from from the moment you walk into and to the station until until the day you leave. The time. Uh, when, when, when I walk in, I usually just get my camera and, and put it in the truck. And then, you know, I, I just chill for a minute because usually I, either I'm going to work with a reporter or I'm going to be by myself. What time, is that? Work, what time are you getting in? Uh, two o'clock. Okay. It's like two to 1030. Okay. And, um. You know, I usually see if I'm going to be with a reporter or I'm going to be by myself. If I'm by myself, then I'm just chasing, like, scanner traffic, like, stuff you hear on a scanner, like, car accidents, shootings, house fires, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But if I'm with a reporter, we kind of develop in one story and making it into, like, a longer form. Pretty much, that's that's about it, man. You go in. We, we do a bunch of live shots. We do go live. We have newscasts from, what, four to five Oh, so you're at, much, you're at the station from from four to five. I it depends on what's going on, man. If I something's going on, I might be out shooting a story. Um, it just depends on the day. If it's a if it's a good day, that means I'm just sitting there. If it's a bad day, that means I'm running around racking. Right, right, right. How many just other how many other photographers story. do they have? I think it's eight eight other ones. I think it's like a total of nine of us. What do what is your preference? Do you prefer to be at the station doing live? Do you prefer to be with a reporter, or do you prefer to be by yourself? Uh, uh it's it's fifty fifty, man. Mm-hmm. It is fifty fifty. Like sometimes you by yourself is you you work at your pace, but when you work with a reporter, you can actually develop a story and you know kind of shoot more interesting video. Mike, you say this is be your, your 12 year, you say so. I think you kind of seen possibly evolution of what the news and what media is. Do you think that the news and the way that it's presented now is presented with the same integrity that it was, say, maybe 10 years ago? Or, or has it changed? Has it become more entertainment like? It's, it's totally changed from 10 years ago. Because for one, you, you got Twitter. You got all the social media that's really pushing, you know, media now. And people, there's more people, you know, onto that. And, and the, the advent of the Internet, too, man, the, the Internet, period. Because if you look at it, when you get breaking news, man, you're getting it on your phone. You're getting it on an app. Or if you if you want your breaking news, where do you go? You go to CNN. So you're not really waiting to 5 o'clock to watch your local news for a story to happen. You may go to that actual website. And see it at one thirty, you know, in the afternoon before waiting to five o'clock to see it. And I mean, I think I think that's a good thing and it's a bad thing. It's a good thing that, you know, the, the information is being put out there. But also to me, I feel like it's a bad thing for television because you're just seeing the, 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 the cycle of media change. Because at first it was all about radio. Radio was the big thing. And then it switched to newspaper. And it went from newspaper to magazine to magazine to television. And now we're kind of seeing it change over from television to Internet. So it, it is a big change in the way media is presented. You see a lot more entertainment celebrity stuff now because everybody has an iPhone or a smartphone. Everybody's taking pictures of 
of people doing whatever and you know and pretty much they they're becoming the new photographers and i remember at one point cnn had this segment called i report i wasn't a fan of that because i'm like man that's gonna put me out of business (laughs) where a regular person can get video of something and send it in to cnn Right. And I was like, man, that's that's going to put me out of business, man. That's that's going to eliminate my job. But I I really haven't seen that much of that lately. But it's it's been a big change from, you know, 2005 to 2015 and in, in media, television, newspaper, because, man, if you see right now, newspapers barely exist. So yeah. it's, it's, it's been a big change in the media, man. It's, it's all about the Internet, even. At my station. Yeah, we're a television station, but the first thing they tell us to do, post it to the web. Post it to the web. Hmm. Hmm. How, how how is it working with those with those big time uh other like ESPN for example? You cover a lot of of of, of, of sporting events, particularly Auburn and Alabama games. Um how is it working as a local reporter against those big Big, big companies. Man, I, I use that H word a lot today. What's the H word? <laughs> it was hate. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use dislike. <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to use I, I dislike ESPN and CBS because, for one, they feel like they own the field. Like, uh, this, this is from last night. Like, we have a certain area where we have to stand, and that's from the 20-yard line to the goal line. And we can we could have been standing there for six plays. These guys are come stand right in front of you just because they're ESPN and they're CBS. That's the I get it. Mm-hmm. I get it. You you spend billions of dollars to you know produce this game, but I'm like, yo, respect the same. You know, respect us too, man. We're trying to get the same plays you getting. So I I, I I dislike ESPN, and even when I watch them now, nah, it's it's not the same ESPN. It's more entertainment than anything. I saw what Lil Wayne was on that the other day. Right. It's like why why is Lil Wayne on ESPN or Sports Center? Like I just want to see sports. I don't I don't want to see rappers and celebrities on there. I just want to see sports and give me the information I need. But mm-hmm. as far as CBS and ESPN, I, I I get it. You you spend big dollars to to cover the games and and air the games, but just respect. The, the the small local media that's covering the game as well. Have you have you met any of their personalities? Um, I mean, not really, man. Because really. I, I, I be in my own zone. I see them like, oh, that's you know, that's so and so or whatever, or that's whoever. But they usually working hard too, so mm-hmm. they just usually stay in our own lanes, man. What about the camera folks? Do you have you met a lot of those type of cameramen that? Because I'm pretty sure it'd be the same folks, right? Or is it different people from those from those stations? Usually the cameramen are kind of the same. And usually these are older dudes, man. You can tell these dudes have been in the game for like 30 plus years. Right. Like they've been doing it for a while. Right. And they, they have the younger guy stringing the cable, which I think they, you know, pick them off the campus and say, hey, we'll pay you $300 if you string cable for the game. That's the other thing people don't know about ESPN. They think when you know you you go work for ESPN, you're gonna get paid a lot of money. And I'm like, nah, man, that's a lot of freelance work. It's a lot of freelance. They just go to the campus, pick out a couple of dudes, and say, hey, we'll pay you this just just to work this game. So I, it's 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 you know it's it's different, man. It's it's a lot of public perception stuff like that. But it's a lot of things people don't know about ESPN and CBS. So that's what they call it, stringing the cable. I was looking at that dude do that at, at the fight the other night. I'm like, that could be one of the best jobs, but it could be one of the worst jobs. Best Man. because you get you get access, but the worst is you got to be stringing that cable and following the cameraman, <laughs> and you can't get distracted because you got to move when the cameraman moves. So that's funny you bring that up, man, because I was thinking about that. I, that kind of stuff interests me when I go to the games. I've been paying attention to the crews and stuff like that. So now I was wondering what they call it. Yeah, man. That, and you better wear gloves, too, or that's going to rip your hands apart, man. You better have on a pair of gloves. I believe it because that cameraman ain't think nothing about you. He gone. So you just yeah, got to be paying walking. attention to what's happening. You, yeah, you, you with him. You, you, when he move, you better be moving with him, man. <laughs> <laughs> you better be right with them and your your cable better be right too for sure you started to show off before people knew um what what it was that you did 
But can you kind of talk about now uh, the story that you kind of mentioned earlier, your greatest story um, covering? Man, you know, at first, the greatest story to me was going to championship games. I, I went to five championship games in a row. It was the BCS. It was with Alabama, Texas, Auburn, Oregon. Was it Alabama, LSU, and was it Alabama, Notre Dame? I I forget them now, yeah, man. Yeah, but, but you went you went to you went to Miami. You went to Phoenix. You went to the Rose Bowl. The LA, yeah, LA twice when when Auburn went back to uh, play Florida State. Yep, yep, yeah. We were at both of those. <laughs> yeah, we went out there, man, and um. The, the Iron Bowl, what was that, 2013? I, I forget the year, 2013, 2014, 2013. Yeah, 13. Kick six, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's all I can say, kick six. Like, we always talked about what was the greatest game we ever covered, the greatest game we ever seen in person. Mm-hmm. Like, that that game right there, man, nothing can top that. Where were you nothing. at? Where were you at when you – were you in the end zone? Were you on the sideline when actually when they when they uh, kicked the field when they attempted to kick that field goal and, and Chris Davis actually caught the ball? I was I was in the end zone that Chris Davis ran to, so oh, I was behind wow. the kicker shooting. Wow! So I'm looking I'm looking at this kick like, oh man, he finna make it, and then it dropped like, oh man, he he missed it. Mm. And I see Chris Davis running like, oh, okay, he, he running. All right. Did you have him on camera? Did you have him in yeah. sight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had him, man. I had him. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and this, this is what I'm thinking while I'm shooting it. Like, oh, he running. Oh, okay, he, he about to get loose. And he got to the 50, and I'm like, oh, okay, he getting a little closer, man. He getting closer. Mm-hmm. And then when he beat the last dude, I was like, oh, man, Auburn's going to score. <laughs> and he crossed the end zone. I was like. Auburn scored. You know, I'm, it's it's just like I'm slow, man. It was just slowly coming to mind. Like Auburn scored. So what are you? Where are you running at that point? Are you trying to get the handshake? Are you getting Chris Davis? Man, when he <laughs> crossed that end zone and it finally hit me that he scored, I ran to Chris Davis and I was in that pile of people, man. <laughs> I was in that pile when when they dove on Chris Davis. I was right there. You captured it. Um, <laughs> you know, and I'm like. Auburn just beat Alabama, man. Like, I, I was, you know, at the same time, you know, I'm an Auburn fan, so I'm like, Auburn beat Alabama. But you then, you know, you got to get back to the work mind, like, yo, get this video, man. Get- <laughs> Mike, Mike was a fan with access at that moment of time. He was able to do what all of us wanted to do. But I'm sure he, 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 had, lost, yeah, he had lost thought, though, too, because he was like, he probably wanted to start jumping up and down and screaming, but he got to, <laughs> he got to record it. Man, you you just don't know how I am on the sidelines at an Auburn football game, man. Oh, you just don't know. You you got to keep it in because one thing, man, it, it tells you on the credential you cannot cheer. It tells you that. And you know, we you know it's it's not just me. It's, it's other photographers at the other stations that are Auburn fans too, or vice versa. They may be Alabama fans covering an Alabama game. But for for that game, man, I I was professional until it was all over, man. Once all, <laughs> dude, once all the people were on the field, man, oh, I, I lost it at that point because I was like, this is unbelievable. So what were you, like, are you still filming? I, I can't filming? believe are you, this. Are you still recording when everybody's running through the – or are you, are you celebrating? Are you still getting – Man, still... I, I was recording. Then one dude tried to grab my camera, and I was like, oh, no, no, no. We, 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 nah, man, I, I lost it. Like, nah, man, nah, you can't do that. We, we, we can't have that. Because, man, I'm – at this point, you know, after they picked Chris Davis up, this was the amazing part, man. After they picked him up, we were trying to interview him, and there's, like, thousands of people around – this dude's grandmother was right there next to him. And I'm like, who picked her out and how did she get him? <laughs> I was like, this is crazy, man. His grandmother was right there. And I was like, man, that's that's real, man. That's that's just real. Did you capture any of did, did you were you able to interview any of the fans on the field or or did you interview his grandmother or anybody? No, nah, we got him. It God, was okay. like when ESPN was shooting it too. Our microphone was in that mix, man. And um, I got you. It was man, and, you know. Once that was over, they were trying to push him out, and then it's like, okay, I got to get to the press room. But it was, 
you pretty much the whole stadium was on the field. And I was, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not a fan of people rushing the field, oh, man. Because that, mm-hmm. that was crazy. I was like, oh, man, I'm like, I got to get to the other end and I can't get through these people. Right, right, right. It, it, that that to me was just an amazing experience. I don't care if you're an Alabama fan or not, who you were cheering for, just to be there and see that happen. This is unreal, man. Never forget that. What's your greatest shot? Greatest shot. Oh, man. Greatest shot. You know what? Oh, some of my greatest shots came from the Auburn, Tennessee game of that of that year. It was of that year when Auburn played Tennessee yep, in Knoxville. Yep. I remember. Mm-hmm. It was an 11 a.m. kick. Dude, I lost my voice. I had a cold. I'm sick. <laughs> I was everything, and and I felt like I did my best work that day, and I'm just down and out. Mm-hmm. Like, I was on top of every touchdown, man. Everything that came my way, I was on top of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I had the ball tight on in the viewfinder. Oh, man, that, that was my best day, even though I wasn't healthy at all. Mm-hmm. At Auburn, Tennessee game, that one right there. Just every, pretty much everything I shot that day was my best day. Who was the ultimate person? If you had to like interview or shoot any event or any person, what what, what would be at the top of your list right now? Ken Griffey Jr. Like I, I'm a big fan of his, man. Really? I really, I really wish that dude career he could have stayed healthy, man, and just had the best career he could. But I, I I'm a big fan of Ken Griffey, and I. I would just love to hear that dude's story, man. Wow. 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 Uh, we had the incident that happened a few months ago. Um, and, 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 and actually in the state that I'm, that I currently reside in, in Virginia, um, it was the, it was basically the, the, the shooting and the killing of a cameraman and a, and a reporter, um, by a former um, employee of the, of that news station. Before that and and after now after what are some of the what are your thoughts on that and then also what are some of the 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 changes that you all have made um, when when filming stores you know before that and even myself man and I think maybe a lot of other people feel this way too you kind of feel protected when you're out wearing these shirts per se you're wearing a, a a TV shirt or you in a truck or whatever, you, you kind of feel protected to a certain extent. And you kind of have the attitude of, man, nothing will happen to me. Like nothing will happen to me. And, I, and I've been like that, man. I, and I, I probably been vulnerable in some situations and probably didn't even know it. But after that happened, man, it, it, it made me look at, you know, some of the places we go and some of the things we do. But, you know, the the real story of that is, man, I, I done been some I've been down the dirtiest of the dirt roads and I've been in some of the hoods of the hoods. But in that situation, you was just dealing with a disgruntled employee. Right. Like this guy was fed up. And, and from what I take of it, man, this guy was fed up with his own career because from the looks of it, he never got to where he wanted to go. And like I said earlier, when you work in TV, you kind of want to move up and, and work in the larger markets or, you know, CNN, you know, national, whatever. And just looking at his track record, he only worked in small markets like Roanoke and Tallahassee. So he never got to like the top 20 markets like Nashville, Atlanta, Tampa, anything like that. And that probably was his dream. And, you know, I can't really speak for him. I can just speak off what I heard. It just seemed like he was troubled, man, and he just couldn't take losing. It was like he lost a lot in life, mm-hmm. and it, it looked like he couldn't take losing. Mm-hmm. And from what I read, this guy had an apartment, like, right across the street to, from the station, or he, he was close to the station, and and he probably watched that news every day because he was just angry that they let him go. He probably watched them every day. And watch their every move because people ask the question of how did he know where they were? And it's like easy. We 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 call it a tease. We tease our stories. We might be like coming up tomorrow. We're going to be live at, you know, the Civic Center. And he probably heard that and he probably waited for him. 
or he probably just followed them because uh, on a morning crew like that, the photographer reporter, you usually work with the same person every day, every day. And I, I was like that, too. And I used to, you know, I used to work with the girls all the time. I used to just call them my work wife because you form that relationship with them. You work with them every day. You know when they're having a bad day. They know when you're having a bad day. And, you know, you, you just form that bond with them. And I, I can believe Allison and um, Adam had a bond because they worked together every day. And they probably felt like they can't be touched out here. And, um... I actually saw the raw video, which I probably never should have watched, and I never watched it again. I saw the the GoPro video that guy had or whatever, and and I just saw him just shoot at them. And I was just like, man, this is crazy. This is just beyond crazy. But that guy just, he, he had nothing to lose, man. And he felt like that reporter took his spot. And they said he had a beef with the photographer or whatever, but that... That that was just a sad story, man. That that's a sad story. That's that's one I can't forget. What are your thoughts on how news stories are being picked up and 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 actually becoming actually newsworthy? So I guess given because BG asked a good question earlier, and and I guess more or less. Now we're kind of seeing more entertainment in news versus or opinion in news versus actual journalism and, oh, and yeah. actually oh, news yeah. stores. What are your thoughts around around that as far as the stories that, that they decide to lead off with versus not leading off with and that process? Man, I I looked at it when I was, you know, just working in Birmingham, working in Mobile. I sit back and I look at who's making this decision. And it's like, and not not to knock anybody young, it's like it's a 20-year-old making this decision. And it's like, man, you kind of got to know the market you live in. You got to know the city. You got to know the people. And you got to realize which story is going to touch everybody in this market, not just one section of the city. That's the way I look at how your top story should be. Mm-hmm. Like you can't just touch a part of your of your market for your top story. I feel like your top story should impact the entire market. I'm not saying you shouldn't cover the story, but it may not should be a leadable story. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, I was told this even you know when I was in school. If it bleeds, it leads. Mm. So, I mean, if, if if three people got killed at a Publix, that's your top story. Mm. And and your sidebar story to that would be safety in a grocery store. Mm-hmm. You feel safe going to the grocery well, store. Well, what about the angles that are taken, though? So what about um, you mentioned in a lot of cases you may be told to go to someone's house and or, or this is the angle. Do you have any input as to deciding on the angles? Because I do believe that news and media in particular have the ability to shape the mind of individuals. It has the ability to shape the perception of people. And when an angle is, is being presented that may not be come off as an angle that benefits a certain group of people. Um, what are your thoughts on how that, how that is done? And I'm glad you said that, man. Cause I mean, I, I participate, but you know, when the law is laid, man, you, you just got to do it. You know, you can say, I don't think this is a great idea, mm-hmm. but some person might be strong in their convictions, be like, do it anyway. It's right. like, OK, that's cool. Mm-hmm. But I- I'm glad you brought that up because, man, you can talk about, you know, the national coverage of like Ferguson or, or Baltimore. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I watch CNN and I was like, why are we just focusing on like these riots? Mm-hmm. Like we're, we're focusing only on the riot, the riot. And I'm like, it's probably so much good going on in Ferguson and Baltimore, but we're only focusing on this. That's the angle you want to take. And once you take that angle, what what am I, the consumer, going to think? Oh, those people in Baltimore are crazy. And, and the, the one word that I feel like should not be used by any reporter, any journalist, is the word thug. I, I hate when they use that word. That's... 
that 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 becomes editorial to me. That that becomes an opinion. Like you you calling people thugs and all this. It's like, eh, I'm I'm not a fan of that. It's like just tell the story, you know how it is, and and in some cases they're they're out there riling the people up. When you put a camera in somebody's face, man, what they're gonna do? They're gonna start screaming like, woohoo, look at me, look at me. Mm-hmm. And when you, you do that in, in Ferguson, when they did that in Baltimore, man, it, it, I I felt like that just added fuel to that fire. And when you take angles like that, you're just trying to get people to watch your station. Is you're that- not trying to tell, you know, a real story. You're just trying to get in viewers. You're trying to get ratings. Is, is there, in your opinion, is there ethics or morale to this art form called journalism and photography? <laughs> it used to be. <laughs> it, it, it used to be. Mm-hmm. Man, it's it's kind of a free-for-all, man. It's, it's still some people that go by the ethics, and it's just some people that just do it for the ratings. Mm-hmm. That We talked about those examples, Ferguson, and, and the way that those pictures were painted is related to the um you know members of those particular communities not being represented in in the media sources i can remember going to uh, one of the one of the big channels i'm on the tour my cousin and i've talked about this previously you don't have anybody that looks like that there's no young black males in there no young black females in those newsrooms and so you know how does that play a role in the product that's put out by the media Man, y'all, y'all boys are hitting me with some good questions, and I love it. I, I, I got to say that, man. I, I love it. Man, it, it, it plays a big role because it's it's a lot of people that look like me are not getting the jobs, man. And, you know, it, 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 they're applying, but I, I don't know. Maybe it's the change of time. I, I don't know. But it, it plays a significant role because – Man, I've been in some newsrooms where I had black, I ain't gonna lie, black people fighting for stories, man. Fighting to get out the good in, in neighborhoods. But those stories get shot down. Like, it, it can be somebody handing out, you know, free books to, like, the neighborhood. Like, ah, oh, that, that story, you know, it, it doesn't do anything for me. That's what a manager would say. It doesn't do anything for me. And I feel like that's the wrong approach because news is not about you. It's about the community you serve. And I feel like, man, if if you had those people in in some of those, you know, some of those positions, man, some of those things would be different or it would be debates on why should we cover this or why shouldn't we cover this? Because I ain't going to lie to you, man. When I'm out here shooting these games, man, I don't see too many faces that look like me as a photographer. That's I don't what see I was too watching. many faces like me, man. You know, I, I don't bring it up, but I notice it. Like, and I remember working in Mobile. I was in Pritchard, man. I was shooting some story, and a man walked up to me and said, hey, what station you work for? I don't work, I work for, you know, WPMI. He was like, man, you have, you, that, that's real unusual that you a cameraman. It's just, just unusual. <laughs> and, and I'm like, why? Because I'm black. This is and this this is coming from a black man. Like this is unusual that I was a cameraman. And that that kind of stuck with me because maybe you know he he didn't see that you know growing up or whatever. Which I I can see that, but I even you know we have interns that come in, black ones, man. I, I try to tell them you know this is what I went through. You gonna go through some things, and hopefully you take this route I take, and hopefully you can be better than me. Have, but, they, have you heard the N-word being yelled at you? Man, <laughs> probably not working. Oh, not working. Okay. I'm, <laughs> not, I'm not working. But, you know, I, I done been in some crazy situations, but I I never heard the N-word, I don't think. Uh, I'm trying to think, man. It's, it's, it's been some years, but no, I, I, I haven't heard the N-word. What is the responsibility of, of us as people um, consumers of the news uh, to force these news stations to uphill to the ethics and morale of journalism. So myself and BG are, are two individuals that, that, that partake and watch, watch the news, whether yeah. it's local or national. But, 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 but I'm under the impression that 
the news that we see today, and you kind of con- and you and you confirm this, but the news we see today is not the same news that 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 our grandparents saw years ago when it was more of an art. How, what what's some of the responsibilities that we can take as consumers to kind of force the these news outlets to go back to the to the basics and provide factual information versus opinionated editorial comments such as thug it's a hard battle uh, all i can tell you stop watching them send, send them a letter the old-fashioned way man you you just don't believe the letters the emails the phone calls we get like oh i'm never gonna watch you again man. and and sometimes that, that sticks because it, it shows in the ratings like this person's not watching us no more you know our, our numbers are going down but if you think about the, the art of journalism man i I think the art of journalism was at its best when when it was newspaper. Gotcha. When it was newspaper, they, you had real reporters. Mm-hmm. They went out and they told real stories. Mm-hmm. Now you look at TV, you got people that just want to be on TV. They're not reporters. They just want to be seen. Right. So I feel like if you just stop watching them, you keep badgering them like, you know, you're awful. I'm not going to watch you. I'm going to get a group of people to not watch you. Yeah, it may take a long time, but man, that that those results will surely add up and it'll make a TV station think like, what are we doing wrong? Right. Like it might not seem like it, but it will take time and those results will add up. Well, we we're getting close to that time. I know you want to go. It's your Sunday, your day off, your one day off. And I know you want to go watch uh, watch your NFL games today. For those of you that are listening, we all we all recording man. this on a, on a, on a Sunday. So um, I'm gonna be honest with you, what, man. What's that? I, I cover college football, but man, I would rather be at home watching the college football games. People say I'm crazy for that, but man, ah, oh, it's just the, the long days I do. I'd rather sit on my couch and watch some of these games, man. Especially oh. that Arvin loss. I could have watched that one at home. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Or not, watch, or not watch it at all, like me. <laughs> <laughs> For future journalists, you know, because we, we have, like, some young listeners and uh, a few um, that I know personally that have expressed interest in going down this road. What kind of advice would you give them? You better master the web. You better learn how to post stories to the web. Man, that that job is the hottest job at a television station. You wouldn't believe it. Becoming a web producer. That's what they call them, man. Web producers or digital managers. If you can write, you get that AP style writing down, and you know how to work the web, you know how to post stories and videos and pictures to the web, man, you got a job forever right now. And there you have Solid. it. And that's real solid. That is extremely good advice. And, and, and man, this has been a good interview, BG. What you think? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I've enjoyed this. I've got a lot of my own personal questions. <laughs> uh, like I was saying, man, that this that part of the thing, I find myself when I go to games and different events and stuff, I'm always looking at the, the journalists, the camera guys, and the news anchors to see how they move and what they're looking at and all that type of stuff. So this was, this was definitely exciting for me. Yeah, that's the thing, man. People look at my, my IG and my Facebook pictures and be like, oh, man, this dude's living a life. But I'm like, man, you don't see me running up and down the sidelines trying to get all the shots, though. You don't see that, man. Yeah, they you don't, don't see they don't me see wearing that. knee pads and kneeling to shoot the game. But it, <laughs> it's it, it's all good, man. It's I, I love doing it, so it's all good. Hey, Mike, and they don't understand. Me and BG, oh, and you don't even know this, but Mike, me and BG, we, we, we the underground. We underground. <laughs> hey man, I, I love it, man. I love it. Me, me and my homeboy used to do a little video, like a little editorial video we used to put out, man. I, we need to get back to doing that, yeah. man. Definitely, definitely, especially if you're able to maintain or keep some of that footage that you've captured. Because I, I believe you probably could write it, and, and I put this in an email before, but I believe oh, you yeah, could probably yeah. write a, a very telling book that would be of, of 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 great interest to a lot of folks yeah i have to change some names though man oh definitely yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely, definitely. definitely so so uh mike again thank you for joining us uh how can the people reach you or are they interested in following you on instagram or any of your stories how can they how can they find you hey man i'm, a, I'm on ig it's taught 
underscore ENT or just look up Michael Tart Jr. on Facebook, man. They can follow me, man. I, I just want to say this, man. I'm really glad you reached out to me and got me to do this, man. I, I would love to do this anytime with you all, man. I had a good time doing this. Oh, definitely, definitely. And what we'll do is, is especially on some of these high-profile stories, or if you got a, some intel that you want to share, um, if if I haven't reached out to you, definitely reach out to me or BG, um, and you have us on, and you see us on um, on Instagram as well, and we'll pull you in for for a short segment and get you to talk about it. We we want to get the information out to the people. Um, and when I mentioned we were underground, uh, we kind of BG and I went to the to the Black um, CBC to the uh, Congressional Black Caucus event, and we just saw how information wasn't being distributed to to the to to the people. And okay. so, and because okay. that information is not being distributed, or we felt like there was a void, BG and I kind of filling that void. So, if you got some interesting stories or some news that that you want to get out, man, let us know. We bring you on. You be a contributor like we have with our other friends, and uh, we keep this thing going, man. Yeah, man, we we can talk some Auburn football because I got some stories about that too, especially about this year. Okay, okay, okay. Well, BG. What's up? Uh, how can the, how can the, uh, the people reach us? They can reach us at freelunchpodcast.com for podcasts and blogs. Also, check for us on Instagram, Freelunch Podcast. Let us know what you think. Give us your commentary. Twitter, Freelunch C. And be sure, you want to see some videos, want to see some interviews, YouTube, Freelunch TV. To Mike, thank you for joining us to the Freelunch Podcast fam. Thank you all for listening. Until next time, this is your boy, Tight Tight. That is my boy BG. We are the Free Lunch Podcast duo, the hottest duo in the South, and you have been tuned in. Peace. We got it. Let's go, let's go, let's get it. Let's go, let it go now. Let it go, let's get it. Get it, get it. Got him, got him. Let's go, let's go, let's get it. Let's go, let it go now. Mathematics, not a problem, no, not for that old block. So sign away for that bull rock. Super small handcrafted all this size, no, they know not. No tougher than tough town. Blacker than the gram, they jump line. No overdose, I'm over woke. I'll be away from crunch time. Be everywhere like sunshine. I leave right cross, punchline. I beat the track, I eat the track. Brown paper breakfast, lunchtime. Dinner date, dessert tray. Wrong with all, no hunger. You see the sign between the line and G's only. No dummies, I flow lovely. They go nutty. They catch a feeling, these hoes touchy. I tell that job off, no bunch. No awakening, whole study. But you're so pretty. Best to show. Sometimes the best way to touch it. Stand up. Go. Get it. And let's go, let's go, let's get it. And let's go, let it go now. Let it go, let's get it. Get it, get it, got them, got them. And let's go, let's go, let's get it. And let's go, let it go now. Before I chose the path, the path chose me. This is a large plan, divine decree.